so I thought I would give the Shop Goodwill a try last year. Hello YouTube friends, Renee here from Renee Anita B. I am going to share with you some things that I purchased last year on ShopGoodwill.com. I had heard about this from Cat the Nurse Flipper. It was right after the Safer at Home orders took effect. Like all the thrift stores in our area were shut down. People were saying that there weren't places to source. Cat the Nurse Flipper had done a YouTube video on it. So I watched it and thought it was really interesting to give this a try. I've sold some of the things that I got. I should have got it all listed and of course I didn't because I just have too much inventory here. So I'm just going to share a few things with you. I'm going to try to hold a picture up in front of the camera and hopefully it will focus. I'm showing you the little Shopkins diecast cars. This was a lot of 10 Shopkins cutie cars. I won this auction for $8.99. The tax, shipping, and handling added on to that. The total was $18.78. I knew that I could sell these little cars for $3 a piece at our flea market. Unfortunately, last year everything was canceled, so we didn't have the flea market. But I had sold them for $3 a piece the year before, so I knew that it was doable. So when I calculated out at, at a total of $18.78 that was spent, and you divided that by 10 little cars, it came to $1.88 per car. I knew I would make back my money. It was kind of fun just to go through the whole process and try this new way of sourcing. I ended up dividing it into two groups of five. I listed them on eBay. One set sold for $25 on an auction with free shipping, and the other set sold for $19.86 with free shipping. Another thing I bought was a lot of belt buckles. There were only four buckles in this lot. Hopefully you can see this without the light shining through it. Let's see if I can do that. So these I did open right away and get listed. I paid a total of $28.31 for the four buckles. It came to a cost of $7.08 per buckle. But I know that I've sold buckles in the past for like $25 or more. And I knew that one of these was by Montana Silversmiths. And I know that that's a very reputable company. I still have two of them left, but I sold two of them. Here's one of them. It is currently listed on my eBay account. It didn't have any name on the back as to the maker of it, but it was done very nicely in really good shape. There was a Marlboro one in there that I thought was probably going to be really valuable. It was basically just black. So I got out my Brasso brass cleaner because I knew that it was a brass buckle. And I've worked on it a couple times now and just polishing it up. Some of the Brasso is caught in some of the crevices, so I'm going to have to go over it again and try to clean it out a little better. But you couldn't even read anything on it when I first got it, and it's coming pretty clean. There's the back side. I think this one is dated 1975. Philip Morris Incorporated, 1975. It's got a lot of wear on it. You can see like the rope is getting worn off. There's like a rope um, border on here that's got a lot of wear on it as well. But I do think it's still a collectible buckle. And if I can get it polished up a little nicer, I think I'll still be able to sell that for at least $20. So the other two that sold... One of them sold for $29.86, and the other one I took a best offer for $25. Again, I offer free shipping. Um, cost about between $4 and $5 to ship them. There. So it came out to a cost of $7.08 each, and I made about a $10 profit on each of those. It was a fun experience, and at least I made some money. So the next thing I purchased was a lot of Vera Bradley purses. My sister had suggested that Vera Bradley purses always sell for her, so I thought, well, we'll try this. I divided the quantity of the purses by the cost, plus the shipping and handling charges and tax, and then decided how much I could bid on it to see if I could still make a profit. So there were a total of 13 purses in here. I have not listed any of these yet, so I'm showing them to you now, getting this video done. Hopefully this will give me the motivation to get them all listed on my eBay store. 
I paid a total of $55.25 for all of these. So I divided that by 13 purses and it's an average cost of $4.25 per purse. So even if I sell them for like $15, I should be able to make a decent profit. So I'm gonna open up this box. This is exactly how it came in this box. Well, there was probably some extra packaging stuff in here. So anyway, this one was still new with tags. Um, it was originally $28. It had been marked down to $19.60. This is a little lunch bag by Vera Bradley. Nice little chevron design. Still has the packaging paper in it. The next one is a little leopard print. Got a nice little carrying handle. I'm not sure what each of these would be called. If this would be like a little makeup bag. There is a pocket in one side. And then there's a nice little deep area. I think I should bring these a little closer to the camera to get the print on there. Okay, next one. Most of these are used, but there are some that were new with tags yet. Um, I am not sure what this one would be for. This might be for a curling iron because it feels like it's a, like a hot pad. And then there's a little pocket on the front. So I'm thinking it could be a travel thing for a curling iron. You could put your hot curling iron in there and pack it in your suitcase without it causing any damage to anything else. That's kind of pretty. This looks like a leathery kind of one. Little clutch. That's pretty. Oh, it's got some colored print fabric on the inside. And then it's got a zippered pouch and place for credit cards on the side. I like that one. That's pretty. I should have had that one listed for Valentine's Day. I bet you it would have sold then. Shoulda, coulda, woulda, but I didn't. It's a nice little green one. Must be the wraparound string to tie it. That's pretty inside too. Nice and clean. Really, they're in really, really good shape. This looks like a little travel one again, maybe for makeup and stuff. It's got some little snap straps on here. Jeez, Renee, get this stuff listed. It's not making you any money sitting in a box. This one's pretty. I like blue. They are authentic Vera Bradleys. They have it on the zipper tabs as well. That's a cute little one. This looks like a probably a laptop bag got a handle on it. This one also has a new tag on it yet. Now this one does not say Vera Bradley on these little tabs. I don't know if that means that it's not authentic. Oh, I thought this was like a laptop case, but I was wrong. It's more like a travel bag with a little hanger on it for jewelry and toiletries. Very cute. Okay, so that one does say Vera Bradley just on a little white tag. Oh yes, it does say it's a jewelry organizer right on it. What is this, a laptop bag? No, it says jewelry organizer. <laughs> I think this may be a knockoff because I don't see... Oh, it does have the Vera Bradley right here. But I don't know if that's an authentic one. Got another blue one. It's a strappy handled one. That's got the nice little zipper pulls that say Vera Bradley. Ooh, I like this one too. This one's nice. It's got nice zippered pouches on the sides with some little pockets in. It's got the nice little flat base when you have things in there. Yeah, I like that one. It's pretty. Here's a nice black print with an adjustable strap. Here's what the inside looks like. The pockets on the outside. Another pocket on the back that zips. 
<laughs> it's got the nice little Vera Bradley on the zipper pulls. Here's a little tote style one. Another pretty print. Of course, it's blue. <laughs> I love all the blue ones. This one's got stiffer on the bottom. Oh, yeah. It. it snaps into place. Or pushes into place, I should say. That's what that one looks like inside. Got a pretty brown and turquoise one. They're getting bigger as I get to the bottom. That's what that one looks like inside. It does have the Vera Bradley tag inside, and it has it on the zipper pulls. Nice pocket on there. Yep, they're getting bigger as we go down. I might have put them in there like that because I know I did take them out and look at them. I did Google whether or not they can be washed, and they can. Most of them can be thrown in the wash machine even. But they are nice and clean, so I'll leave that up to the buyer. And then a nice big suitcase it looks like. Maybe that's a diaper bag. It might be because it it's lined with plastic inside. So it could be a diaper bag or a beach bag. Nice big pockets in there. Yeah, that one's really nice too. Big pocket on the back side as well. Yes, this is a definitely a diaper bag because there's a, a diaper changing pad that snaps in here. Let's see if that looks clean. It does. It's very clean. There's no stains or anything on it. So that's neat. So that was all that was in that one. Like I said, that was a cost of $4.25 per purse. So I think I will have no problem making my money back, and I should be able to make some decent profit on this box full. So I thought that assortment was really nice of the Vera Bradley purses. There was a lot of variety in there. I thought that was well worth the money. So can you make a profit if you buy online at shopgoodwill.com? I think so. I thought I would give the Shop Goodwill a try. It, you know, after, after you're quarantined for a while. Jeez, is this even working? Oh my gosh, why can't I stay focused today? Focus, focus. So anyway, God, why do I always say that? It's annoying. I'm doing a lot of paper rattling. Okay, another thing I purchased was a, a lot. A lot. A lot of them. I purchased a lot. I always purchase a lot. Too much. <laughs> I divided the quantity of the purse, purses by a certain dollar amount plus all the ship, shipping and I divided the quantity of purses. What did I divide it by? Who knows? I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. It's time for bed. As always, from my heart to yours, share love, not hate. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.